for this watercolor tutorial. My paper has oil pastel on it, so anywhere I have oil pastel, it will resist the watercolor. Kind of like when you're baking, if you are adding water and oil together, you have to measure those separately because the water will resist the oil, making it to where if you mix them together, the measurement will not be correct. So when we're trying to put watercolor on top of this, anywhere you see my yellow, my paint will not be able to soak into the paper. But anywhere it's left white, it will be able to soak into the paper. With our watercolor, we have a watercolor palette, a paintbrush, and you should have a container of water. Right now, we just have watercolor pigment. The pigment is asleep, it is dry, so if I touch it, I don't get anything on my finger. The color stays there. To use watercolor, we have to wake it up with water. So to wake up the watercolor, I'm just going to dip my paintbrush into the water. I don't want it dripping wet, so if I have extra water, I'll just tap it on the side. If it's not dripping, I can bring it over to the color I want. I'm going to wake up the red. So I put a little bit of red. As you can see, I'm letting my paintbrush dance across the top. I am not squishing it down. I am not giving my paintbrush a bad hair day. I want it to look just like it did when I started. I shouldn't have pieces of the hair coming out. I shouldn't have it squished down and looking wild. I want to use it very gently, just gently waking it up. When we use watercolor, the more water we use, the lighter that color will be. The less water or more pigment that we use, the darker that color will be. We also, at the top of our watercolor palette, have a lid. So you can always use that lid up at the top to kind of see what your color looks like, if it's pretty dark or if it's very light. Mine is pretty dark, I'm happy with the way it looks so I can bring it to my paper. When we are painting with watercolor, our paintbrush should dance across the page. So as you can see, I'm just barely tapping my paintbrush down and it goes all the way across. As I am going on more places in my paper, you can see that I'm starting to run out of color. If I'm using the same color, I don't need to rinse my brush. I just dip and grab some more if I need more water. Mine has plenty of water, so I should not have to dip into more water. I could just dip into my color and come back and add some more of that color somewhere else. Again, I should not have to press hard. My paintbrush should dance across my page. If it's not dancing, that tells me I probably need to use more water. Whenever I'm finished with a color, I want to use up as much of that color as I can, which means that I paint until most of it is off of my paintbrush. At that point, then it's time to clean out my paintbrush before I change colors. I cannot take my red and go straight into my orange or take my red and go straight into any other color because that will mix them up. So I have my water and my paintbrush. I'm holding mine so you can see it better, but you would always leave your water set on your table and just bring your paintbrush to it. You will swirl around, gently touching the bottom. I'm not squishing my paintbrush down. I'm just gently touching the bottom and swirling my paintbrush around. As you can see, my water barely even changed colors. On the screen, it looks pretty much the same, but I can see just a tiniest tint of pink to it. If you are changing the color of your water, that means that you're wasting the watercolor. We want to get as much of the paint on our paper as we can. I can come and wake up another color. I'm going to wake up the orange this time, so again, I just need a little bit of orange on, I mean, I need a little bit of water on my brush. I'm coming to the orange, and my paintbrush is dancing across the top. I can check and see if I like my color using the lid. This one's pretty light, but I'm okay with it being light. And then I'm going to continue to let my paintbrush dance across the page. Again, use that color as much as you want to use that color. If you need more water, you dip, you don't swirl so we don't waste the pigment. And then you can wake some more orange up and bring it over again. All right, I want my orange a little bit darker in some places, so I'm going to pick up more pigment 
you can see that made it darker just like we said before. So the more water you use, the lighter your color will be. The less water, which means more pigment, the more color you use, the darker it will be. The more water you use, the lighter it will be. I finished with my orange, so again, I'm completely rinsing and then going to the next color. Again, you can see that I didn't waste a lot of pigment because it's pretty light. If this was super dark orange, I would know that I've wasted a lot of that color. I'm waking up my color. And again, as I'm painting, my paintbrush should dance across the page. When it stops dancing, that tells me that I can get a little bit more water and a little bit more paint. Again, if I have plenty of paint in my palette, I don't need to grab more water. I can just dip right over there, which you'll see me do here in just a minute. So I'm running out of color. I have plenty over here. I'm not adding more water. I'm just grabbing more of that color and using it all on my paper. I'm using a bigger brush so I can fill these spaces more quickly. If you feel like it's taking you a really long time to fill in your spaces, you can ask for a bigger paintbrush. So again, if my paintbrush isn't dancing, I need to add more water. If I am changing the color of my water a lot, that means I'm wasting my paint, which means that I need to make sure that I use all of that paint up on my paper before going to switch colors. If I need to mix colors, I never want to mix by going from one color to the next. I want to start with whatever color I want first. So if I want a red orange, I can bring some orange to the top, get as much of that off of my paintbrush as I can. So I'm getting all my orange off, rinsing my brush, and then bringing some of the second color. So orange, I'm bringing it up to the top. So now I've made a nice red orange that's kind of between. I can mix here on the top of my lid, or I can mix on my paper. I can mix on the top of my lid or on my paper, but I cannot mix by going straight from one color to the next on my palette. Otherwise, these will get messy and the next person that uses them will not have the nice neat colors that you started with. 